Well, welcome everyone here this morning, uh, those in the audience as well as those that are live streaming or YouTube. Our announcements are as follows. We have a thank you card that comes to us that says, bless you for the little things you do in this thought in thoughtful ways. Bless you for the way you've brightened up so many days. Bless you for giving your giving heart and kindness as it can be. Bless Carver Road in a thousand ways for truly blessing our family during these difficult times. It was so much appreciated. The cars, the calls, the prayers, the serving of family, uh, everything was so superb. In Christian love, the Flemings, Hargraves, Robinson uh, family, and Thomas family, Reed and Thomas family. The young adults will have a Zoom meeting today at 4 p.m. Um, this meeting, if you have not received, um, if you did not receive the email, please contact Sister Tree below and give her your email address. As the young adults will have a Zoom meeting today at 4. Please keep the following members and their families in prayer in the passing of their loved ones. Sister Courtney Massey and Brother Willie Massey Jr. in the loss of their uncle. Also in this loss, Sister Shagel Reed and Fran Thomas of their great uncle. Sister Dolores Reeves in the loss of her cousin. Brother and Sister James Gatson in the passing of Brother Gatson's brother-in-law. And Brother Reggie Nichols in the loss of his uh, brothers, his nephew. Also would like to mentioned that Brother Simon Johnson lost his sister and has one that is uh, in a coma as well. So let's keep all these families in prayer. Attention members, the 2021 envelopes are ready for pickup in the lobby. Please be sure to stop at the table and get your envelope. Members, if you wish to have a printout of your 2020 contribution statement, please sign this in the foyer. Also, if you have requested a printout, of your contribution statement. They are ready for pickup in the lot. The Mac, Mac, Mount Church of Christ uh, evangelism, evangelism Department presents All Souls Matter, Zoom Series, Who Shall Deliver Me, and Dr. Jefferson Carruther, the Army Minister, will be conducting these series of meetings. They will be held on January the 19th. Uh, at 6.30 p.m. And you can get the uh, pass code or reading ID uh, from the bulletin board in the order. Time is truth in ruthless in truthless time. Part three comes to uh, come to Jesus now. This will be held February uh, <coughs> 9th, 7th through the 9th, February the 21st through the 23rd, as well as January 24th through the 26th. This will be a YouTube uh, event. These are all the announcements that I have. We will now begin our morning worship. This morning, invocation taken from Psalms, the 100th chapter, verses 1 through 4. Psalms, the 100th chapter, verses 1 through 4. And it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him in his presence with singing. Know that ye, that the Lord is he God, he is God. It is he that made, that made us and I ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving, and into the courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we come to you at this time. Thank you for this day, for this opportunity for allowing us to come and fellowship again once again, Father. We pray for the health of all of us, the Lord, that you keep us safe during this pandemic. We pray for those who cannot make it, Father, that you will Allow them to be in fellowship with us. We pray for the one that will come before us, Lord, to deliver the word. 
that were touched alive and dead throughout this nation and its life. And we also pray for this country, Lord, for the healing of this nation, for the division that we're going through right now. Just keep us safe, watch over us and guide us. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I am so glad that Jesus rose with all power in his hand. Amen. Jesus rose with all power in his hand. Jesus rose with all power in his hand. In his hand, in his hand they carry that he died. Oh, to his hands, to my God's unchanging 
Father, as your son ascended back to you, the Holy Spirit descended for us. He descended so we we, we could learn how to live for you, Father, to guide us through our life, Father, to comfort us while we're here on this earth. Father, in this comforting, you have comforted those who have lost loved ones. We follow we come on behalf of the Johnson family, the Flemings family, the Gaston family, and any other family that I may not have mentioned that have lost a loved one. Mm-hmm. Father, we ask you to continue to allow your Holy Spirit to comfort them during this time. Yes, Lord, yes. Father, there are some who are dealing with sickness. We ask you, Father, that you bless their bodies, that they may return to a reasonable portion of health and strength. And Father, there are some that have you have given recovery to. And we thank you for that recovery that you have given to them. Amen. Father, we come this morning asking for your forgiveness of sin. For we all have sinned and come short of your glory, Father. Amen. And Father, we thank you for your forgiveness of, your, of our sin. Father, we come now thanking you for this church. Mm-hmm. Father, you have blessed this church, this local congregation. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for the man servant who continue to stand here and preach your word. Yes. Father, we thank you for the members who continue to come out to hear your word being preached. Amen. We thank you, Father. Mm-hmm. And Father, we just thank you for each and every one that's represented, whether they're here in person or looking on Facebook. We thank you, Father. Father, we ask you to continue just to bless us 
as you have done in the past. Continue to be with us. Father, we thank you for the leadership of this local congregation. Yeah. Just continue to be with us as we continue to help to lead your people with yeah. your help, Father. Yeah. Father, we come thanking you how you have blessed our country. Yeah. It was in turmoil for many years. Mm -hmm. Father, things were said, things were done that was not pleasing in your sight. Families were separated. Families were hurt. Words were said that hurt people. But Father, through it all, you kept us. You blessed us. Father, you have blessed us and you allowed us to come through unscathed. And Father, now as we prepare to go into a new transition, a new administration, we ask you to bless this administration, Father. Yes. We realize that they have a lot of things ahead of them that was negative. Oh, yeah. That they have to change and make it back into positive. So, Father, we ask you to bless this new administration. Oh, yeah. And, Father, we ask you to bless the administration that is going out. Even though, Father, we realize that they didn't do everything right. But, Father, maybe perhaps you can get them a change of heart when, while they're out. Amen. Amen. So just be with them, Father. Father, we just thank you and give you praise and honor for all you continue to do for us, Father. Father, we just thank you. We love you. And, Father, we ask you for your forgiveness of our sins. And, Father, we ask you to help us learn how to forgive one another. Help us to understand that basically it's about loving one another. Mm -hmm. Father, we realize hatred has been betrayed in our country for many years. But we as Christians should have always had love in our hearts for each other. So we ask the Father to help us to bring back that love that we may have lost for someone. Help us, Father. Be with us, Father. And thank you, Father. For we ask this prayer in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise him. Come on and praise him. Come on, just praise him. Just praise him. He is my Jesus. Blessed Savior. He is worthy to be praised. So come on, just give him the glory. Just give God the glory. Well, in all things, give him glory. He is my Jesus, blessed Savior. He is worthy. Yeah. 
is the truth. We find ourselves in our conversations with one another, saying to one another, I just need you to tell me the truth. No more lies, no more stories, no more fear. Just tell me the truth. The truth is a valued commodity that makes a difference in the lives of the children of God. And really, truth makes a difference wherever you are in life. You want to be around folk who tell the truth. That's a difficult lesson for men, just how to tell the truth when they're Wives say to them, well, honey, do I look like I'm small? Tell the truth. <laughs> but make sure you know how to tell the truth. You're certainly looking different these days, honey. Thank you, you're so kind. Time is truth, the truth is time. We're talking about biblical truths, and today we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the, the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit, and uh, we, we have two constraints. We have the constraints of being in our assembly for an extended period of time and also making sure that we are not very long with this broadcast, uh, timeless truths and truthless times. I'll be reading from the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2, verses 27 and 28. And I will tell you that oftentimes in this reading, people are familiar, more familiar with verse 28 than verse 27, but the two go together as does the verse after 28. I'll be reading Joel 2, 27 through 28. The Bible reads there, and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else and my people shall never be ashamed, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Again, that's Joel 2, 27 through 28. The Holy Spirit, a gift for all of God's people is what we're talking about, the Holy Spirit a gift for all of God's people. If you are a child of God on today, you are a daughter of God, you are a son of God in the faith, God has promised you His Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is for every one of God's children, everyone who has come to Jesus Christ. And oftentimes in religious history, people have put various stipulations on obtaining the Spirit, however, they have referred to the Spirit. And sometimes in religious context, people are believed, are made to believe that some have the Holy Spirit who are in Christ Jesus, and some others have not yet attained, obtained the Holy Spirit. What you need to know at the beginning of this message is that there is no distinction in the faith between who has the Spirit and who does not have the Spirit. But everybody who is a son or daughter of God at the moment of obedience in Jesus Christ is sealed by the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1, 13, and gifted with God's Holy Spirit in his or her life, Acts 2, verse 38. Sometimes in the religious world, it has been preached and taught that when you first come to God, you get your salvation in water baptism, your justification. But that you don't yet have the Holy Spirit until you go through a process of praying through and having extraordinary faith so that you get to your point of sanctification. And then you have what they call the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost and is manifest in your ability to display various gifts. And that is a very, it has been a very popular teaching, but it is not consistent with the Word of God. What the Bible teaches, again, is that everyone who is obedient to God obtains the Holy Spirit. And what I want to do in the short time that I have, and you can believe the short time that I have, is I want to talk about the truth that the Holy Spirit was in Jesus, the life of Jesus, as he was human. We want to look at also that uh, in the Old Testament, those who were prophets were 
gifted with the Holy Spirit. They manifest the Holy Spirit. So I want to talk about Jesus and I want to talk about the prophets. And then I want to talk about restoration teaching in the Old Testament. Where it is envisioned that all of those who belong to God uh, at a period of time when people exercise faithfulness. And then we want to spend the last minutes looking at the gifting of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Understand about Jesus, that Jesus came into the world as a result of his mother, Mary, being found pregnant with child of the Holy Spirit, Matthew 1 and 20. Now some may be confused right now because I keep saying Holy Spirit instead of Holy Ghost. It seems more mystical to people to say Holy Ghost. Uh, it sounds something like something that will make you act up a little bit if you have the Holy Ghost. Something that will cause you to rub the back of your head or run up and down the aisles or go into fits or tantrums because one believes that the ghost is doing something different from you than the spirit. But both Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit in the English are translated from the same Greek words, whether it's Hagia, Holy or Numa Spirit. It was popular in the 14th and 15th and 16th centuries to refer to your spirit as your ghost. And what would happen is you would give up your ghost. That means that you had died. You have given up your ghost or your spirit. But there is no difference between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. But sometimes in religion, we like to feel scared, like, like overwhelmed, like something is going to happen to us. I mentioned earlier this morning, it's something about the boogeyman that gets our attention. Something about ghosts that gets our attention. Something about uh, something that looks weird and odd, like, like Chucky. Remember that movie Chucky? Chucky was a little tall that wasn't very high, but he sure scared everybody because he was walking around with that knife and doing injury. People uh, didn't even want a Chucky doll around them. I know I have grandchildren and they were watching it. I told you a few weeks ago, it, Kenny Wise, mm. the clown, watching that movie, and you know, always a sign of of it being around, Pennywise being around, was a balloon. Y'all remember what color the balloon was? Yeah, it was a red balloon. Whenever you saw the red balloon, that meant that, that Pennywise was not too far away. We like to be scared like that. We we like signals of being scared. So one day last week, I was feeling not quite right. <laughs> All the grandchildren were at the house, and I was feeling mischievous. You know, you feel like that sometimes. <laughs> So I stopped by the party store, picked up eight red balloons. <laughs> Might have been nine. After I left the church building here, I drove home and I went to the side of the house where the window was open and I set a red balloon right in front of them. <laughs> and I could hear them in the inside saying, there's a red balloon. <laughs> the seven grandchildren were staring with eyes wide and open. I went to the front door and I put the red balloon down in front of the front door. It was a door. I said, ring the doorbell. And my wife opened the front door and she said that I would be, but they looked big to me when she saw the red balloon. I was standing around the corner watching everybody get nervous about that red balloon and then I bust into the house with six more red balloons. Children were running and screaming, they thought for sure. Pennywise, there's something about, something about ghosts, and scary stuff. Now, I know people are saying, you're too old for that, but they're showing up for nice <laughs> Jesus comes into this world as child of the Holy Spirit. When he was baptized, remember, uh, God came to him and said, this is my beloved son, but the Holy Spirit fell in the form of a dove. And then, the Bible said that the Spirit drive, drove Jesus into the wilderness. Jesus, he says, cast out the demons by the power of the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter, Matthew chapter 12 and verse number 28. And then the Holy Spirit as a human raised Christ from the dead. Romans 8 and 11. The Holy Spirit was with Jesus from birth 
to death till his resurrection. The Spirit of God in Scripture was a special gift, especially evident in the life and work of the prophets. Moses was a prophet who once entertained the thought that all of God's people would have the Holy Spirit. In Moses' day, as it was throughout the Old Testament, usually the whole of the, the, the Holy Spirit was evident in the lives of prophets and what was uh, indicative of the fact that they were prophets is that they would have dreams and visions. The, the, the dreams and visions would not necessarily be clear, but they would tell a prophecy. And if the prophecy came to pass, they could assume that surely it was a prophecy from God and this man uh, was a prophet. But also you had that sometimes people's prophecies came to pass and uh, they would say to the people that uh, they should leave the law of God. And there was also always a standard for determining whether a prophet were a true prophet, whether his message was from God, and the ultimate standard always was the word of God. And all of us in religion must understand that regardless of what comes our way in our lives, whatever we think is miraculous, whenever we think that God is working, there's always a standard to determine whether or not uh, what I believe is happening really is happening and that is the word of God. If what I feel, what I think, what I practice is not consistent with the word of God, then it cannot be from God. And people don't understand that the reason there are so many faith choices in the world is not because God has given us so many faith choices. It is because people don't use the word of God as the standard by which to judge whether or not it comes from God. Above all of our thinking, all of our thoughts, all of our dreams, all of our hunches, all of our prayers must stand the word of God. So Moses was a prophet. He evidently had the spirit of God. But Moses said this, and this, this was odd. He said, would that all of God's people had the spirit and did prophesy. Numbers chapter 11 and verse number 29. Moses' his brother and sister both had the spirit and were prophets, but Moses was a different prophet than they were. And then God says to Miriam and says to Aaron, uh, when there is a prophet, I speak to him in dreams and in visions and, and not clearly. With Moses, it's not so. I speak to him face to face directly. And what we should learn from this is that although all three of them have the spirit of God, God doesn't necessarily do the same thing in the lives of everybody who had the Spirit. Moses had the Spirit, but he was different from Aaron and Miriam. What happens in the religious world today is we believe that if a person, when a person is gifted with the Holy Spirit, they must all manifest the same thing. This was the teaching of a very popular church in the 70s, and even today, they were teaching that if you had the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, what you would eventually do is speak in tongues. And you have a whole religious world out there believing that they are speaking in tongues, that they got the Holy Spirit, and it turns out that wasn't even the teaching of the Bible. But you do know that people use their experiences as the standard for what is truth rather than the Word of God. I know I spoke in tongues. I know I did. Nobody could tell me any different. What about God? What about the Word of God? People, the Word is, is the standard. And so Moses said that I would that all of God's people had the Spirit and were prophets. And that was when they came up out of, out of uh, Egypt into the wilderness. They eventually stayed 40 years, but hundreds of years later, what we read in our scripture this morning what Moses only envisioned. Joel saw as an ultimate reality that was going to come one day. Joel said that it shall come to pass in the latter days that God would pour out his spirit on all flesh. What I've said to the church of this morning is every one of God's children, every son of God who's been obedient to God has received the spirit of God. That is everybody who's obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. But understand this too, that the Spirit only comes once we have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So I cannot claim to have the Holy Spirit outside of Christ Jesus. I cannot claim to have the Holy Spirit if I have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
and obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ is obeying it to the extent that God washes my sins away. And God always does that in baptism. Not with my prayer, not with my belief, not with my mental acquiescence to the truth that he rose from the dead. I must eventually be obedient to the word of God. It's when I confess that Jesus is Lord and have buried in water baptism that God gives me with his Holy Spirit now. For a lot of people, that's not just, that's just not the way they did it. It's unfortunate, again, that people have not been taught to use the word of God as the standard by which they judge a thing to be right. And so there are countless numbers who will tell you right now today that I prayed to God and I felt a burning in my heart and I knew it was at that time that God saved me and nobody can tell me any different. And I say to the religious world, that, that, that's mighty scant evidence to go on. And it's not trustworthy evidence to only talk about what you experienced and what you felt, but to have no biblical basis by which to judge it. The Bible teaches that a person who believes and is baptized shall be saved. The Bible teaches. Sins are washed away in baptism, Acts 20, 20, 16. And I know you know, like I know, that there are a whole lot of popular preachers with 20 and 30,000 members in their congregation sometime or more who have satellite churches all over the world who will tell you right now this morning, today, tonight, anytime, all I need you to do is pray this sinner's prayer. God, I'm a sinner. I recognize Jesus, your son, and come into my heart. And now, God, thank you for salvation. You need to understand that while it sounds good and it sounds convenient, it's a big lie. Amen. It's a big religious lie. Amen. Amen. Somebody says, well, how can you say that's a lie? Well, here's my question. How can any man or woman say the Bible is a lie? Amen. The Bible teaches repent and be baptized for the remission of sin. Acts 2.38, that preacher stands saying to you, just pray and have Jesus come into your heart and you're saved. Who's right, God or that preacher? Well, there's so many hundreds of thousands who's obeyed, who have obeyed what he says. Well, the Bible says, few that be, that will find the straight and narrow way. And sometime or another, we need to come back to what the Word of God says when it comes to religion. So, Joel, Jeff, Joel envisions the day when all of God's people have the Spirit. I said, I want to talk about restoration in the prophets. What the prophets often envision was the day when everybody who was in faith would do right on his or her own. Jeremiah saw a day when everybody would obey God without having to be called, without having to be reminded, without having to be sh sh shaken on the shoulder. Jeremiah writes in his days of prophecy that God said, Behold, the days come that I will make a new company with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord, Jeremiah 31, 31 through 32. God says, as good as I was to my children, as good as my, I was to my people, that they still break my covenant. We need to understand here today that people do not disobey God because God isn't good. God's good all the time, right? And all the time God is good. He's good to every one of us. He's better to us than we deserve. God knows his record is to always be good to everybody. Jesus said he let the rain fall on the just and the unjust. The sun, the sun shines on the wicked and the righteous. God is good to everybody. You are as well as you are today because God is good. But here's the other thing one must understand. Just because God is good, that doesn't make us act right. See, it's on us to obey God. It doesn't make us give God praise on a glory. As a matter of fact, we get rebellious. It doesn't make us become steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. God does his part. It's time for us to celebrate an opportunity to do our part. And I tell you, God has been good to us, good enough to every one of us, for every one of us to give God our very best. That's how good God is. God said, which covenant 
they bring all the law of her husband to them. But Jeremiah envisions this. It shall be, then, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will pour my, put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, No, the Lord. For they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Jeremiah 31, 33 through 34. Let us know, ye out, that the only way we can have a relationship with God is that God forgive our sin. You know, we are some sinful creatures. Y'all know we do our own. When Paul was reminding the Romans that they shouldn't judge the Gentiles, he reminded them that they were some sinners. Then he said in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Unless God forgive our sins, we cannot abide his presence. Unless God forgive our sins, he will not hear our prayers. Unless God forgive our sin, our worship doesn't mean a thing. Unless God forgive our sin, it does not matter who we think we are, where we go in life. We cannot have a relationship with God. So God says, I will forgive their sins. I, I won't remember their iniquity anymore. And I tell you, you ought to celebrate this morning. Yeah. That God's willing to forgive your sin, your wrongdoing, your lying, your stealing, your backbiting, your talking about people, your making excuses. That's all of us. Thank God. That God will forgive our sin. But don't miss what Jeremiah said. He says it'll come a day when the word of God is in everybody's heart. And you don't have to have people teaching everybody. His neighbor saying know the Lord. They'll know the Lord for themselves. Now that's, 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 that's a period of time that although it's supposed to be the new covenant time that hasn't come yet. When everybody acts like he or she knows the Lord even in the church. There are a whole lot of people in the church who still haven't learned how good salvation is for them. Who still have not learned what faithfulness is, what faithfulness looks like. God wants our faithfulness. Let me put it this way. In your Christianity, you ought to grow to the extent that nobody has to remind you of how important it is to assemble with the saints. That's what you're aiming for. Nobody should have to tell you that you need to be in church yeah. with the saints assembled. Yeah. If I have to be told that all the time, I'm not where God wants me to be. Yeah. Nobody should have to tell you that you need to commune with the saints yeah. to reflect upon the blood shed and the body given. We are not good in our Christianity until we're to the point of understanding how to do that on our own. I am not where. I need to be as a child of God. If at every time difficulty comes, every time trouble comes, every time a storm arises, I have no more faith or confidence in God. I can't do what I need to do. I can't give God my all in all. I said on well, last week, here's, here's our test. The question is not what we do when everything's going our way. You ever had anything going your way? Ladies, remember that morning you woke up and your hair was just right all day long? Someone said, I don't remember that. Well, at least it started with that way. <laughs> that day your hair was right, your clothes fit like you wanted them to fit, everybody complimented you on your shoes, your nails were tight, your toes looked right. One of those kind of days. But everything was going, going right in, in, in your life. Uh, whatever goodness is in your life, God brings it that way. Man, remember that day you got up and everything was all right in your life. That ought to be a day when you praise God and give God glory for how good God is. But you know, even when everything goes right in our lives, uh, we need to remember if everything goes wrong, we still give God glory, honor, and praise. Some people can only be Christians as long as everything is going right. But there are no difficulties 
When people don't talk about it. Do you know how many children that got out there right now saying things like this? Well, I told myself, I, I never come back to church because they talked about me. <laughs> they talked about Jesus. Those people are supposed to be right. And they're talking about, oh, you're supposed to be right too. Well, I'll never go back to church because the preacher ain't right, the elders ain't right, the deacons ain't right, nobody's right. Well, won't you do right? And give God glory and honor and praise in your life. But I feel like I was tricked. I didn't, they didn't tell me everything I needed. Needed to know when I was growing up. I'm just not finding out some things about the Bible. You're supposed to grow. It was hard enough teaching you what we did teach you hard here. We are supposed to grow. Welcome to humanity. As long as you live on this earth, carefully, you try to learn something. Try to grow and try to deal with difficulty. I was in a conversation here recently discussing how members of the Church of Christ, God's people, are not even considering what they're doing. When it comes to their Christianity, they, they're going everywhere, being everywhere for extended lengths of time. But when it comes to their attendance in their city, it's not safe. And the thing about it, people, the spirit people, those of you who have the Holy Spirit, is that if you are posting that you are at a revealed party, you know what that is? That's when somebody who's pregnant is going to reveal whether it's a boy or a girl. And you leave as a boy, then you know, it'll be a certain color. What, what color is that? The, uh, blue? And if it's a girl, it's, it's a pink. Somebody says in today's world, they, they even got purple in some of them. Models. Here you are posted on Facebook and reveal part of you are at. And then, when it's time to come to worship service, it's not safe. No, no, no. I, I didn't know this, but one of the members let me know this morning that during the Christmas season, people were dropping off Christmas presents at the church and they go and get back in the car instead of staying for worship. We don't even think about what we are doing. We're at the restaurant with nine and ten other folks, but we're ashamed and scared to come to church. All that breathing and talking and spitting and eating and going on. And you feel safe there. But you can't come to the assembly and stand nine feet away with a mask on. We don't even think about what we are saying and doing. Folks see us at the store, see us at parties, birthday parties, see us at funerals. We can go everywhere. But when it comes to our faith, we've got a ready excuse. We said on last week, we are not proving stuff because we can come to the assembly when we don't have to wear masks, when we don't have to socially distance, when we don't shake hands. We demonstrate our faithfulness to God when we can come to God in spite of the fact that we're wearing masks. In spite of the fact that we're staying six feet apart. In spite of the fact that we're not touching each other. When we can give God glory, honor, and praise in the assembly of the end, That's when we demonstrate to people who God is. So I can be everywhere else. But can't be in the assembly. I'm making a weak testimony about God. So Jeremiah envisioned a day when all of God's people we're doing what was pleasing in God's sight. Now in the New Testament, there on the day of Pentecost, Joel's prophecy is going to come up again. The apostles were here on the day of Pentecost. Jesus is written from the dead. He's ascended to the Father. And about on that day, the apostles began to speak in other languages. They were other languages. And I know out there in the religious world, sometimes people have been made to think that the apostles were speaking Jibbetan. Unintelligible words. And you see that sometimes in church assemblies where people just stand up and start making noise. And they're calling and speaking in tongues is because they don't understand. And let me say something, religious people. Everybody practicing religion does not understand religion. Amen. Amen. 
And again, the comparison of what I'm doing must be by the word of God. And so they thought they were speaking gibber jib but what the folks said is, how hear we every man in our own language where we were born? It starts the list of Parthians and Medes and Elamites and so on and so forth. And Peter stands up on that day and says, Hey, brother, these men are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, and this ain't your uncle. Amen. But <laughs> this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. That God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all the flesh. Now let me say it again, as we said a few months ago. The gift in Acts chapter 2 is not the manifestation of spiritual gifts. The gift is the Holy Spirit himself. The gift of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit himself. Now how many people know in the Old Testament that the person had the Spirit? He knew because that person prophesied. How did a person who prophesied believe that he was a prophet? It's because he had dreams and vision. But when it gets to the New Testament, what was the standard then is not the standard in the New Testament. On the day of Pentecost, although there would be people who would speak in tongues and people who would prophesy what was going on that was causing all the amazement, is that they heard people speaking in tongues, not prophesying, but speaking in tongues. And it's at that point that Peter preaches the gospel that the same Jesus that they thought they had killed and crucified and put to death, God raised him from the dead. And Acts 2.36 says, God has made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When they heard this, they said, Many brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is, once your sins have been covered, you receive the Holy Spirit. Once your sins are forgiven, you receive the Holy Spirit. All of God's children this morning who have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ are sealed by the Holy Spirit and admonished to be filled by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5 and verse 18, admonished not to resist the Holy Spirit, admonished not to grieve the Holy Spirit. He's a part of your Christianity and the task is, Galatians chapter 5, to be led by that same Holy Spirit. That is, we ought to bear fruit to the glory of God with the Spirit, we ought to be empowered to look like children of God. Uh, Paul puts it this way when he thought about uh, what the fruit of the Spirit was. He said in love and joy, peace and long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, uh, and kindness. The Bible says against these things, there is no law. Every child of God ought to allow God to work in his or her life so that they look like a child of God, that they live like a child of God, that they walk like a child of God. And that when I'm walking in the Spirit, I ought to understand what is fruit of the Spirit and what is against the Spirit. What happens in today's religious world is people want to hear about how good the Spirit should be and how good life should be in Christianity, but have forgotten that there's another side of that. That is, when I walk contrary to the Spirit, God is not pleased. They say to us as preachers sometimes in churches of Christ, well, why do you all preach so much negativity? Well, what do you mean negativity? Well, why do you bring up people's sins? Why, why do you bring up what people are doing wrong? Won't you just preach about the goodness of God? Ladies and gentlemen, it cost Christ his life because we sinned. That's the reason he went to the cross. And we need to remind ourselves that sin grieves God. I want you to understand something else. That you don't expect a preacher in the 1800s who owned slaves to preach against slavery. He couldn't. You don't expect a preacher who lived during segregation to preach against segregation. He couldn't. And people loved to go to church where he preached because he wouldn't bring up the fact that they were racist and bigots. Although they were racist and bigots and needed to repent. They needed to hear that truth, but the preacher refused to preach the truth. It didn't just happen in those churches, but it happened in the Church of Christ. We got a whole lot of preachers these days that get that come to church and tell folks about how good God is to them. 
and everything God's going to do for them, but never challenge them on their faithfulness and the fact that they're walking in sin. But see, it's going to be hard for the preacher to preach about sin when he's dating four or five sisters and one brother. Come on, somebody. <laughs> he can't preach about that. You can't preach about folk ought to live right to the glory of God because you feel the Spirit when a song leader who leaves singing twice a month because he has a good voice, but you don't see him the rest of the month. You can't preach about being faithful to church, but you got your song leader who's unfaithful getting up to leave singing just because he sounds good. You can't preach against sin. Amen. Amen. You can't preach against sin when your Bible school teachers are all shacking. Mm. And talking about a God who put food on your table and clothes on your back. You don't expect that preacher to get up and talk about the fact that folk need to get married instead of shackling. And that's the reason the folk can go to a whole lot of churches of Christ today. Never hear about adultery. Never hear about shackling. Never hear about fornication. Never hear about unfaithfulness. Because the preacher is complacent himself. So don't be complaining when you come to Carver Road and I get to talk about sin. Now you're in a negative. <laughs> Show right. Because folk need to learn about sin. When you have the Spirit of God, you walk by the Spirit. Not led by the devil. You're going to hear it. You know young people in the church Christ will supposed to be going out and getting drunk together. Y'all looking at me from <laughs> At the club together with all the sinners and you want to shake in your hand. Come on somebody, do a nasty stuff. Got your hands and elbows all on your knees and your back. That size, you know, I ain't gonna show you. <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit. When the walk sanctified lives, spirit filled lives manifest itself, themselves, in the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. We need to follow up with this because my time is up. What I said to you this morning is from birth to death to life again. The Holy Spirit was in the life of Jesus. During the time of Moses, the Spirit was in the life of the prophets. But Moses envisioned the day when all of God's people would have the Spirit. Joel prophesied of that day when all of God's people would have the Spirit. And then Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. That those folk who had crucified Jesus could call for Barabbas who had themselves been complicit in his death, needed to have their sins taken away. And once their sins were taken away, God would seal them with his Holy Spirit. And I want to say to some of my brothers and sisters who have not yet found themselves back to this assembly, who watch us on Facebook, get a glimpse every once in a while, go back to cooking, <laughs> sleeping, working in the yard. I saw the program. You didn't give any money. <laughs> you haven't come in. You haven't come when you can come. But here's the other part of it. The pandemic is only an excuse, an excuse if you want it to be. So don't tell yourselves, those of you who are healthy, those of you who can come, that the reason I don't go to 4399 Carl Road because it ain't healthy, it ain't healthy, it's as healthy as they reveal for you been to. Funeral, birthday for me. Y'all gonna do a drive-by and still get out the house and get out of the car and try to go in the house. <laughs> so this is the evil preacher, but I'm telling you the truth. Stop playing God. If God is who he says he is, and he's been as good as we say God is. And I need to demonstrate I belong to him above anybody and everything else. And I'm going to be faithful to God.
You do know that the brothers are not your God, the sisters are not your God. God in heaven is your God. Now tell the truth. Had he blessed you? Yes. Had he been good to you? Yes. Doesn't he deserve your very best? Doesn't he disturb, deserve your worship? He's gifted you with his own spirit. Father, I don't know how many times I said Father, but Father. <laughs> you can have the Holy Spirit. You do have the Holy Spirit as a child of God. But the challenge is to walk in step with the Spirit. Amen. Amen. So you can have the Holy Spirit and still be cussing for it. The Bible says that's grieving the Spirit. You can have the Spirit and still be more dedicated to your job than you are to the assembly. That's grieving the Spirit. Yeah. You can do a whole lot of mischief and evil. But God has made you his son or daughter. You still have the Spirit. What we need to do is get thankful enough to live according to that Spirit which he has given us. The church is going to be stronger. The fellowship is going to be that much greater. The church is going to shine that much brighter. Those of us who've been blessed by God's Holy Spirit and, and, and are proud of it, live according to the very same. If you need God this morning, come and believe that Jesus has died for your sins and buried and rose again. Be willing to repent of sin, confess Christ, and be buried in baptism. But sin will wash away, and when the Holy Spirit comes into your life as members of the body of Christ, let's show faithfulness Amen. in how we live from day to day because every one of us has received the gift of the Holy Spirit if you need it. Make a noise together, we stand and sing. Oh, last and be my Savior, be and be my January the 30th. Uh, that's January the 30th, and it's going to be uh, at the uh, All Service, going to be at this Life Celebration Center at Bennett uh, Smith Funeral Home. And this is at Salisbury, Melbourne. Melbourne. So uh, just contact, contact uh, Brother Gaston for further information. And once again, it's going to be on January the 30th. <coughs> I want to thank everyone for their prayers. My father's hip replacement surgery a few weeks back went great. Um, against what we wanted, they went home yesterday. They were staying with us while my dad recovered. So just um, continue to be, uh, pray for them. 
that. Let us pray. Once again, Father, we come to thank you for your blessing that you're blessed on each and every one of us. Father, we come on behalf of those who have lost a loved one. Father, we ask you to continue to send your comfort through the Holy Spirit. Being with the Johnson family, Father, blessing them during this time of bereavement as well, Father. Blessing the family as they, uh, the sisters in the coma, Father, as you touch her body, be merciful towards her, Father. And Father, just thank you for the Gaston family being with them during this time of bereavement, blessing them and watching over them during this time, Father, and just continue to guide that family. Thank you for Sister Pilsen and the well of her father who, as he, the surgery went well, Father, as you continue to be with them as he continue to recover. And Father, if there's any others that we have missed who are going through sickness and illness, Father, we ask you to continue to be with them. Watch over them bless them. For we ask this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As well, me and the Sister Copeland at this time, Father, and, and, and they're returning back to classes, Father. Um, watch over the teachers, watch over the students, Father. Protect them and guide them, Father. Yes, yeah, just pray in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's now this time to set aside where we have opportunity to demonstrate our love that we have for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and God the Father, in our giving. I'm coming from 2 Corinthians 9, 6, 7, and 8, our hearing. But this I say, he would sow us sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. He would sow us bountifully, shall reap also bountifully. Every man according to the purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always have all sufficiencies in all things that may abound to every good work. At this time, we give you opportunity to give. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountain, over the mountain, oh. Shows when this act is done. 
Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, on the morrow, and continued his speech unto midnight. For our hearing, I'm coming from 1 first, first Corinthians 11:23. For I received of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the same night that Jesus was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the bread. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you, thanking you for your Son, Christ Jesus, that died for our sins. We pray for this bread represents your Son's body. We pray that you take this in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. After the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had such saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray for the cup. Dear Father in heaven, once again, we come before you. Thank you for your Son, Christ Jesus, sacrifice on the cross. We pray for this cup, Father, which represents your Son's shed blood. We pray we take this in remembrance of what Christ sacrificed for us. In Jesus' name we do pray that the church say, Amen. 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 At this time, the ushers will come before you to collect your attendance card. He's an old time God, yes he is, oh yes, he's an old time God, yes he is, don't you know that he may not come when you want him, oh but he'll be there right on time, cause he's an old time God, oh yes, yes he is, he's a loving God, he's a loving God. God. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, my Lord is a loving God. Yes, he is. Don't you know that he may not come when you want him? Oh, but he'll be there right on time. Because he's a loving God. Oh, yes, yes, he is. He's an old time God. He's an old time God. Oh, yes, yes, he is. Oh, yes, I say he's an old time God. Yes, he is. Don't you know that he may not come the way you want him? Oh, but he'll be there right on time. Because he's an old time God. Yes, he is. Let us bow. <coughs> Father in heaven. thankful, Father, for those that have joined online. And we pray, Father, that you continue to fill us with your spirit and allow those, Father, that have been for a while to come back and be assembled with the saints. And we thank you, Father, for it. And thank you, Father, for this message. And we pray, Father, that you might bless us throughout this week, throughout our lives. For us in Christ Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 That was a fantastic message today. And I want to say amen again for that message. Thank you. Say amen. Amen. We do want to just take one moment uh, before we dismiss to uh, welcome those who are visiting with us today. If you are visiting with us, uh, we want to know, we we'll allow you this opportunity to just stand and tell us who you are and where you're from. So if you're visiting with us today, anywhere in the audience, or you brought a guest uh, at this time, we'd like you to stand and say who we are and where you're from. Amen. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Anyone else? Don't be shy. If not, we know that you're here, so we appreciate having you in our audience, and we certainly welcome you uh, any time the doors open. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry, Deborah Dawson, I forget the four o'clock of the day, there's a Deborah Dawson meeting, uh, Felicity's sister, Trina Roy, about that. On Wednesday night, we'll have the regular signing, brother. 
John will be speaking on the subject Wednesday night, fixing faulty foundations of faith. That's the regular sign-in on Wednesday night. Uh, this is evangelistic. We would like for you to encourage your friends who are on Facebook to join us for that Wednesday night Bible class. Good to see those of you we have not seen for a while uh, over here. Glad y'all made it this morning. I wasn't preaching about y'all. I'm just saying glad to see you, see you here at this morning. Stay safe. Don't be scared. Don't, don't be scared. Oh, good, to see, good to see the Greens back as well uh, on this morning again this week. Pray that God will keep us all uh, safe. And let's continue to pray for the church that, that God will give us the wisdom to be able to work to his glory uh, during this very difficult season. Uh, season. Be careful. This week they talk about bad things happening. So just, just be careful and on the side of God. Is there anything else? If not, consider yourselves dismissed.